day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Hey everybody, this is part D. I hope you enjoyed part A, B, C, and now we're on D as we start to wrap up and tell, but after that I started having some technical problems and, and I lost a lot of the audience. So uh, we're gonna go just be uh, A, B, C, and D for our Bible study. Uh, the rest of it was more conversations and and I was not, not in it <laughs> to keep us focused on, on the scriptures, but it was a good conversation. Uh, and, but I probably won't, I won't put that on the YouTube. Amen, because I, 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 I didn't go through it. I don't, I'm not sure what was said. But I'll look at it. And if it looks like it's uh, something we want to just go ahead and uh, post, we'll do that as well. Amen? All right. But this is where we, last slide we got to before we got cut off. It started off in John 3, 16. And I wanted to read that. I mean, Moses knew that by heart, so God's, that it was like for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to whom some will believe is in him so not perish but have everlasting life. Last week we talked about the fact is that these one of the brothers said it was a caveat uh, to about God so loved the world with the emphasis that God loved the Christians. Well the scripture was clear to me and I wanted to bring that out it says for God so loved the world that's the world period that's nothing about that. God loves every man, every creation he's made. God loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. Now, he, he sent Christ who died on the cross and rose again, amen, for the world to be saved. I remember the brother said, if we fell ahead and said, he did all that so we don't have to. He did that so we don't have to go to hell. But as far as there's the punishments and stuff, we know martyrs and in Christianity history, we know people have been abused. Uh, it's not that piece. It's the eternal life piece that makes a difference It's talking about. He said, but that who's unbelieving should not perish but have everlasting life. That's the piece that goes in there. That's the qualifier for the eternal life. Not about living this day-to-day -day world. And that's what we do Bible studies for is applying the word of God in our everyday life now. And therefore, we, we're not talking about eternity. We're talking about now. And in that time now, we are subject to the laws of this land. And we're also exposed to the potential brutality of those who don't want to enforce the law of man. But we will. We will do that because we're believers in Christ Jesus. Amen. And one of the other scriptures said is, Philippians 3.10, that we may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. Here the part I want to sit there and say is we want to know Christ. And I'm asking everybody who's listening here, encourage your pastors to teach you and everybody else in that congregation to know Jesus Christ. We got to know him because that's what the whole purpose of it is to know him and the power of the resurrection. And we speak with the confidence and we operate within the law. And when somebody try to violate the law, whether they are ministers of the law through police, you know, the police not ministering the law correctly, any evil doers is what I'm saying. Then we, we speak on the high ground. And we have the high ground, the power and the might of God shines through. There's gonna be cases where people just jump you because they heard or you look like somebody uh, or they didn't get a chance to let you speak. Stay, 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 stay in compliance. And give you a chance in your day in the court. Don't fight them because that's not going to make life better. Amen? Just think about that. And then we ought to remember the fact that the fellowship of his suffering, we as Christians need to understand if we're persecuted, not prosecuted, when we're persecuted for Jesus' sake, we take it and we say, God bless you, hallelujah, anyhow. Because we have been found worthy to do the things that God finds acceptable. So if somebody's going after you for doing the will of God, you should praise God because God is taking notice as well. 
Yeah. Now, I put them in Romans 12, 1. It says, I beseech you therefore, brothers, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies, your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Is God's will be done, not your will be done. Is God telling us not to conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. It is a mind game. And you have to be able to fight this situation using your mind. Don't, it's, it's not about being, look, ain't about us being game bangers. <laughs> ain't about us being, uh, Rest, hit, we call them skinheads or, or KKK. It's not about that. It's about us using our mind to do the right thing. When you do the right thing, that's when the enemy, when he does the wrong thing, is exposed. When you got bad cops, you stay in line with the law. You comply. You bear fruits of the Spirit. There's no law against that. But if we allow that to happen, we're fellowship in the suffering of Christ. Christ will address it. Vengeance is the Lord. He will repay. But if we get into the flesh, we try to address things to the flesh and make things people change to the flesh, you're going to miss the hope. You're going to miss it every time. So let's not conform to this world, but let us be transformed into the image of his dear son to do that which is acceptable, the real, the perfect will of God in our everyday life. It is not, like I said, I think the biggest challenge we have is people focus on religion. And they, they think we're supposed to act our way through. This is a way of life. And that's living sacrifice is the fact is that we have to die to self. That's what he that's what he wants us to operate, die to self. So the so, so that his will can be done in our life. Because our will, our foundations, is like a crumbling sand, sand. And when the wind and wind, wind and rain blows on that foundation, that house. The house falls because the foundation is weak. I said, if we do our own opinion, it's weak. When we try to sit there and do racism, it's weak. It's not everlasting, it's not sustainable. It will go away, trust me, it will go away. But we wanna make sure it doesn't be replaced with anything else as well. We need trust in God. He'll bring us through. Galatians uh, 5, 25, 26, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be a vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. God says we, we, we got to walk in the Spirit. I'm talking about, to me, it's like you got to walk using your mind. Instead of using, you can't, this, this is not going to be the answer. Pulling a gun is not going to be the answer. Pulling a tape is not going to be the answer. But do it by bearing fruits of the Spirit. That's where the Holy Spirit rests upon you. And when somebody comes after you for representing Christ, not in a deep, just by living Christ, you better sit there and say, hallelujah, I must be doing something right. <laughs> that's how we had to look at that. So that's what we did this week. And like I said, and we, we had some intermission and all that, some breaks and bandwidth and so forth. So we didn't capture a lot of the uh, discussions that went after it. Uh, I'll take a look at it and see if it's uh, what we put up there. But if not, we'll be able to cover it again next week. Amen. So I hope you enjoy the rest of your week. This videotape, by the time it comes out, should hit around Thursday or Friday. Uh, be joy and be safe. God bless. All right. Check you later. Bye bye. Amen. And I still, I still get a lot of people I know, oh, I can't wait till I can get back in church. I can't. You know, and I'm like, and in my mind, I'm like, man, you should be having one of the greatest times you could ever have. Yeah. Because now the the focus should be more so on you and God and God alone. You know, you got more time, more quality time to me because of this this uh this pandemic. Yeah. So and and they should find out that it's not about the building. It's really not. It's about a relationship with the Lord. We're not in, we're 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 not in a so-called church right now, and and we're sharing the gospel with each other. We're we're perfecting our our ourselves and and renewing our minds. 
So, we well, that's a good point though, man. And uh, some, you know, just like establishing the, the the end from the beginning, you know. Um, but uh, how many of us really sat down and have prayed uh, God during the time of separation, this pandemic, when I'm uh, pretty much taken out of the mainstream of a lot of things? Uh, what would you have me to do with this time, and how would you? Of me to spend this time. What should what you would have me to focus on during this time of this pandemic? Mm-hmm. I mean, um, I, I I don't know. I, as I'm sitting here thinking, you know, wow, what a perspective. Which should have been everybody's perspective. Yeah. In this situation, as God, okay, now that you have separated me, you gave giving me this time off the road. The Black Lives Matter protest allow myself to be conformed to this world and just drug along with the cesspool as it begins to flow or no yeah there's a lot of stuff out for you to brother but that's not what I, I don't want you to focus on none of that here's where I want you to put your focus mm-hmm. but I mean I don't know I mean I I, I, I have to say I've been guilty of, of uh, being drawn away by my own love and it's hot you know what yeah. I'm saying yeah. yeah I know exactly what you're saying I thought it would have been just what, whatever is that what he had had me to do during this time? I doubt it. I doubt mm-hmm. it seriously. Yeah. But you get a point, though. I'm glad you, you brought that up. You can't assess yourself. You know what I'm saying? You get yeah. to you know, where you are on a personal note. And uh, I was kind of surprised. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How would near this, you know, point of the thought was, you know? It, it, now, it, I'll tell you, I can definitely tell you uh, the only time when God was my only uh, focus. I'm talking about seriously. The majority of my my day, my night, my time that was focused on God and Him alone. I'm talking about when I was like that, and and nothing else really really mattered was uh, right after I had congestive heart failure, and that was more. Of uh, of uh, of uh, <laughs> knee jerk reaction. It, it, I don't think it was knee jerk. It was knee uh, jerk reality. No reality yeah. set in. Yeah. It was. I had yeah, a clarity like of you've never had before exactly. because I right. knew that the only way that I was going to survive was by God. <laughs> so He was my priority, and and nothing in this world mattered. Nothing. But to but my relationship with God because there was a uh, I was on my deathbed, you know, and so it shouldn't require that yeah. because you're actually on your deathbed at any moment, right? You know, prior to so that 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 need that thirst to be as close as I could be with God to ensure that I'm not going to hell, that my life uh, mm-hmm. on this earth mm-hmm. is extended, you know, the, the whole, everything that you can think of. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was all at the forefront mm-hmm. of my mind and to, to, to just be one with him. And, uh, and I can honestly say that the revelations that I've been getting since that moment has just been mind blowing. Yeah. You know, uh, when you put your focus on God and you really want to get past all of the religious, uh, religiousness, the the uh, the customs, you know, and the courtesies of Christianity, when you just want the the pure, unadulterated, un unfiltered. Uh, connection with God and Jesus Christ. He's there waiting to give it to you. You just have to do it. You got to put in the effort. You know? Well, just like in that second verse of Romans 12 and 10. Those were the strongholds, like you said earlier. Those were the strongholds exist. Mm-hmm. That's how we were programmed, and now we got to be reprogrammed, so we overwriting the hard drive again. 
exactly and that and that's that's that is that's not a one-time occurrence man that is a constant to to renew your mind i mean if just if 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 watching something flash on this tv can change my whole emotion and 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 my my calm my peace if it can vex me then something's wrong there's a disconnect yeah. you know what i'm saying with yeah. with me and my father you know there's there should always be peace in my mind and myself regardless of what i see because all i'm seeing is a disconnect from my father you know that's what the chaos is you know that's where all the the, the violence and the the uh yeah. Life, situation, movement, he's just going on. Have you heard of things with God to really now. that all these problems are true? You know, he take care of you, he got you covered. He has what angels dispatch you and said, not fear the terror of night on the air that flies by day, so forth and so on. It's hard to believe that he destroyed the whole world and saved eight people, or that he took out a few cities and brought out three. You know, all these stories we're given. But it's difficult to believe that they're true because our senses tell us something else. Our experience tells us something else. How can all the time, both of those towers go down and not one saved person was in them? You know, or somebody in there that did the same. Maybe not. That's the power of God that we serve. But through experience, we gain, I think, confidence in that. And then we can go forward knowing that when Jesus said, it ain't my time yet, they couldn't touch him. And that's where we live at. And I think that's the encouragement to abide in Christ. And the abiding in Christ is also a mental issue. You know, I can't lust after women and still think I'm abiding in Christ. I can't let my mind go in certain places or my behavior take me to certain places because I'm no longer abiding in it, so that stuff doesn't count for me anymore. You see what I'm saying? And those are the places that we we begin to, our um, behaviors are modified and we're given the carrot to modify our behavior so others can observe the righteousness of God displayed through us. We carry ourselves in such a manner because God pays us to do it. I don't know if that, that sounds right or not, but there are benefits into complying with his standard that go out of this world. We have angelic protection. Is that true? Is that possible? That I don't have to fear the terror of night and the air that flies by day because he's going to give his, uh, his angels charge over me to bat me up at least I dash my foot against the stone? Is According to your faith, it is. Yes, I agree with you according to our faith. But it also, pre the, pre 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 the preposition was, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High, he who abides in me. If you abide in me, in my word, abide in you, and whatsoever you ask in my name, I do it. Love your enemy. Bless them that curse you. Pray for them that despitefully use you and present you to you. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if they ask you to go to one mile, go with them twain. If they take you lost, see you your coat, give me a coat also. Well, it's just it's it's proof that outside of Christ, man, this it's impossible. Amen. It it, it really is impossible to uh to walk this walk, you know. And you, you can't get the big head, you can't because I mean, immediately you you doom the fall, you know. It's, it's like the uh, the parable, you know, the soul. It's like, look, them birds are coming to get that seed, <laughs> or that, or or your roots are gonna dry up, or or the thorns are gonna choke it out of you, you know. So, so what do you think our, our position should be? What should we look like in reference to what's going on now? What should, what should we look like? I mean, what should we be doing? Yeah, what should our behavior be like? You know, in reference to all that we've seen happening in the media with Pastor, I mean, Pastor, with Donald Trump and the rest of the group. Well, it's like we were saying. We should just be walking in the spirit and allowing God to move in our individual lives and it's not 
it, I don't know God's will for me, let alone the church, the body of Christ during this time, other than to win souls. You know, I haven't gotten any, any other, in this walk um, other than that which I don't think at this point we need to be doing anymore because I think that is God's will until we get something specific I, I can't that's the only way I can answer that, that question bro you know um, I know I even in during you would think during this pandemic that there would be no joy man i have extreme joy you know uh you would think that there would be suffering and you no know, there's no suffering that I know, you know, not even, uh, 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 no friends of mine have even been affected with this COVID, you know, as far as die, knowing that I know of God. Now I know people who know people that that's been uh, affected with this. I know people who know people that actually tested positive, but nobody that I know, like you guys, none of y'all have been tested positive. If you have, you haven't told me. And, uh, and nobody like that, nobody that, none, not even my associates have told me that they've been, you know, uh, either asymptomatic or, or either been sick by COVID or anything like that. So it's just, it's, and to me, that's just God, you know. So, because that's my desire, you know. But uh, I can't think of uh, uh, of God giving me any anything to do other than what we're doing, you know. And 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 when the when the moment comes for me to uh, share the gospel. I just do it, but I tell you what, I'm I'm amazed when I go to the store, you know, and I see these people. I mean, there's very the, the people wearing masks are are far and in between now. You know, this 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 COVID nineteen don't seem to be worrying folks, at least in Warner Robins. You know, the majority of them, and. Uh, I really do apologize. It just, you just had me thinking, you know? So. What about you, Pastor? What you both keep doing is just do, do what we're doing. The Word of God, living the Word of God and applying it in our life, even the same we had last week in discussion this week, was how do we address the social issues of the day? It's by applying it the way Jesus did. Always keep it and point it toward Christ. That's the gospel. He is the answer. There's no other, uh, you know, I think I think that's where the problem comes in is when we try to do it different ways instead of the word way. You know, your sister-in-law your sister -law last week was impressed because she she told us she she's not getting the word of God. Mm -hmm. She didn't know. And she got a revelation, you know what I mean? You saw that. She got a revelation of the word, and you knew that there's plenty of revelation to come. Mm -hmm. But she got a revelation of the word, and she was like, let's go. <laughs> yeah. And I think what we have to do is keep <laughs> opening scriptures to people so they can see it and apply it. And, that, and I think that, that that's probably the number one thing, you know, 
uh, we have to, you know, I guess they say you can, you can have a, a hook yeah. with no bait on it and it, you, you'll be lucky to snag a fish. Come on. If you put some bait on that hook, they, the fish are going to go to the hook. Exactly. <laughs> And I, and I think that's how society has done what we just talked about was we have put the politics into the faith instead of our faith into the politics. Praise God. And now God is sitting there saying, I want to give y'all what happens when you do that. Amen. Right? When you get to church, the, you know, John 17, he said, I have given them my word. Right, Jimmy? He has given us the word so that we may become one with the word. Mm -hmm. We're not going to become one outside of the word. That's why you got to watch out when you say, what's your opinion? The opinion is, speak the word. What, what, who is that says speak the word only, Jimmy? Who is that? You remember? Who says speak the word only? In my service shall be healed. In my service shall be healed, yeah. yeah speak the word only. I'm not worthy that you should come into my house. Just speak it. <laughs> That's what it's all about. You know, so I'm saying just encourage people because like I say, you talked about Jimmy said earlier, or maybe Brother Addison, if you're talking about a certain race of people, and I'm okay, we can't say that's true for a certain race of people, but the people who don't read, that's where you hide it from. <laughs> you had you heard you had the word by putting it in a book. Oh, so that's why that's Trump's problem. He don't read. <laughs> yeah. Put it in a book. That's true, man. <laughs> That's real. Yeah. So, so I think it's, I think you know we can wrap it up. But the thing is that we get that's why the word gives revelation. While we doing the studies and stuff, is yeah. the word. If we don't have, if you, have, I don't think Jimmy, you remember us ever had the Bible study without the word. Uh, it ain't gonna happen. It ain't gonna happen. Is it? Is it? Isn't that an oxymoron? It is an oxymoron. <laughs> I'm sure it happens in places. Yeah, well, a lot of places where they sit there, they say they don't want you to know nothing, right? When they say, yeah. you know, I told you, you know, I told Brother Addison the first time I started ministry, a little 30 season minister said, <laughs> if we tell him everything, he won't be in charge. Yeah, that's crazy, ain't it? That is Come crazy. on, brother. <clears throat> Why does why Jesus say, speak the word and so don't crazy. hide the word? We will be reconciled Dang, to the Lord. world. We're ambassador to the Christ. He is the he's a, he's a central. Everything should fall toward him. Yep. And, and Elder, when you said that uh, Mr. Floyd, he didn't call for Jesus. That's where that would have been a great testimony, wouldn't it? Yes. Great testimony. Yeah. And the testimony I'm saying is, oh, oh brother, Asa, last week you asked the question about God, God getting glorified from it. I remember the scripture where, and the one example was about the man born blind. And it was asked, who sinned? The parents or the man? And Jesus said, neither. Yeah. He said, but for the work of God to be glorified. For, mm -hmm. I, 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 you know, I, now God work can get involved with this. I'm sitting there saying, even with the death of Floyd, God now would say, what is the church going to do? Because of this. Right? Now is the church supposed to do the work of God. Applying that situation. What's the work of God? Is what he wants us to do. So, Elder, why don't you give us a communion so we can get out of here. All right. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. He blessed it. He gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body. We shall be broken for you. So they took it and they ate it. When supper was ended, again he gave thanks and praise. He took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and drink all of you. But this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. Whenever you do this, 
do it in remembrance of me. So you take the cup and then drink. Amen. Man, that was awesome. And I'm giving us a, a, a quick prayer for the week, if you don't mind. Close out. Thank you again, Father God, for allowing us to come together. Yes, thank you, Lord. We feel your spirit working in the midst of us. Lord God, you, we can try and we can try for years and years and years. But when we're trying to do the wrong thing or the right thing the wrong way, hmm. we'll never get the right results. Woo! And we just thank you, Father God, for showing us wow. how to do the right thing the right way. Woo! We thank you, Father God, for focusing our attention on you. We thank you, Father God, for showing us that we are to connect with you, mm -hmm. even though your word says it. Even though you said it for a thousand years, we are finally coming to the realization and the understanding. Thank you for our military time, Lord God, who taught us how to listen to the voice of one man and move in concert with each other. Thank you, Father God, for speaking to us and letting us know that we will know your voice and another we will not follow. Teach, thank you for teaching us to hear your voice, Lord God. Thank you for teaching us. And now, Lord, empower us to execute in accordance with your will. Mm. Help us, Lord God. Give us the courage we need, even in the hard things, Lord God. We call for that day when we're to be sacrificed, Lord. We ask you for the strength. We ask you for the strength, Father God, to walk this thing out completely, that you might gain glory in our departure. And Lord God, that others will be drawn to you and that they will receive eternal life even as we have received it. Let all that we do be done to your glory and yes. to the presence of your kingdom. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. 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 Amen.